Today's video, I'm going to walk you through how I created this checkered pom-pom technique out of painter's drop cloth. Welcome back to the Sopapia channel. I'm Michelle. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Today's video is going to be a short one. I am going to walk you through the process how I make this really cute checkered pom-pom um, look on painter's drop cloth fabric. As you know, I love, love, I mean, I love, love working with painter's drop cloth for my sewing projects. And here, let me show you just real quick. It's going to look something like this. If you want to see what I made out of this, you'll need to tune in next week. So today, um, I hope that you'll join me for this very short video on how I made this. And before I do that, I'll go ahead and give you just a little bit of the basics for the painter's drop cloth that I'm going to be using for this today. Okay, so just a little bit about the painter's drop cloth that I'm using in uh, today's video. Um, I got this off of Amazon and I'll have the link in the description below. Um, I started off with it's a 8 ounce premium drop cloth. It is a 100% cotton and I use this quite a bit. Um, it's kind of in the middle of lightweight and heavy. It's kind of a slightly lightweight to medium and I absolutely love it. And as you can see, I'm going to When you open up the package, you will notice that the fabric will be quite thick and it's very structured, you know, just very, very thick. So you will need to wash and dry your fabric before you start this process. Washing and drying will soften up the fabric quite a bit and it will shrink. It'll do a lot of shrinking um, within the washing and drying process. So you'll need to get all of that out of the way first before if you plan on using the drop cloth for any garments to wear, you know, a dress or a blouse or even pants. So you want to make sure that you get all of the shrinkage out of the way beforehand. Just note that when you do wash it the one time, yes, it will soften up. However, each time you wash the drop cloth, each time you'll notice that it gets fluffier and softer and it's so nice to the touch. So just to let you know, disclaimer, um, that you do have to wash your drop cloth before getting started with sewing projects for garments. Okay, so after washing and drying, this is just wash one, and you'll notice how soft it is. And you will have to press your fabric um, to get some of the wrinkles out, but as you can see, it's not too bad. Um, sometimes I just start a project right away, just straight out of the dryer. But for a clean, crisp look, I do recommend pressing the drop cloth fabric. And I love this so much because if you look close, it has like little specks of just natural elements and it looks just like linen or just a lightweight canvas. But it, and it's perfect for dyeing if you plan on dyeing your sewing project with this. But you need to make sure it is 100% cotton for any dye to absorb and take and, and last for that matter. Uh, but yeah, so this is what we're working with today. So before I forget, the size of this drop cloth is actually 5 feet by 20 feet so I got a ton of drop cloth fabric to work with and but today we're only going to be using maybe a yard and an eighth 
of the, the drop cloth fabric and I purchased this for under $20 but just keep in mind I will have a link below the price does go up and down so um, but at the time I purchased it I did purchase this for under $20 and okay i think that's enough information on the drop cloth for now in the future i do plan on um, releasing uh, everything you need to know about drop cloth and using drop cloth for sewing patterns i've had a huge request for that and i appreciate it so much thank you for reaching out to me and requesting this and um, so yeah keep an eye out for that video and i do plan on releasing it very soon I have my fabric here on the fold and I'm measuring out how much fabric I'll need for my project. For the finished project I'll want it to be at least 20 by 22 inches so I'll need about one and an eighth yard of fabric which comes out to about 40 and a half inches or 102.8 centimeters. And before I get started, I am going to pin and secure the fabric down. That way, when I'm tracing my design on the fabric, it won't move around. I do want to warn you ahead of time that with this sewing project, the prepping of the fabric does take quite a bit of time and it requires a lot of patience and love. Um, but the end result is so rewarding, so just uh, be patient. Using my clear roller and pencil, I'm going to create columns by tracing lines along the fabric. And starting at the edge of the fabric, I am measuring out two inches to create a guide for me to draw a line for the column. I'm going to continue this across the fabric. So that you can see what I'm doing a little better, I went ahead and trimmed my fabric just a little bit so it can be in full view. And what I did was at the open edge, I pinned it down and I pinned the center. That way when we start cutting out our columns, um, the pieces can stay a little bit more secure and not come apart. And now I'm just removing the pins. What I'm doing here is very similar to what you would do when you're assembling pieces for patchwork. Um, I'm joining together two strips here. I am matching the corners and the edges and just pinning it down along the whole entire strip. And once I'm finished, I'll sew along the edge about a half an inch or 1.27 centimeters. But before I start sewing, I'm going to go ahead and start stacking all of my strips. So when I'm done sewing, I can just jump right in. Okay, again, I'm going to go ahead and sew the edge of the strips about a half an inch or 1.27 centimeters from the top all the way to the bottom. Thank you. 
Now we're going to go ahead and repeat what we just did. We're going to attach another strip along the edge of this fabric. We're going to pin it and we're going to, again, sew a half an inch or 1.27 centimeters along the edge of the strip. Now I've completed three strips and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process with the other strips and if you find that it's too difficult to or there's too much fabric to handle um, you can break it down into sections and you can use like five strips at a time and then once you're finished with all of your strips you can go back and connect all of your sections so that's what I'm going to do here so now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and put you on a time lapse. That way I can go ahead and get each section done. Um, and I'll meet you back here in just a second. And just remember that all of the sewing scenes, you will be sewing at the edge of the fabric a half an inch or 1.27 centimeters. After you're done sewing, you'll want to give it a good press. And by doing so, this will make the next step a little bit easier. Next up, go ahead and lay out your fabric and the raw edges will be face up and downwards. And with your clear ruler, we're going to trace lines across the fabric to create two inch columns. And uh, you can start from either the left side or the right side. Following the lines, you can go ahead and start cutting each column.
Again, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process of assembling our strips together. The only difference is, is that we have the raw edges now. So what you'll want to do is make sure that the raw edges or the flaps are facing downwards and they're all in the same direction. Don't be afraid to use as many pins as necessary. It's better to have too many. That way you can ensure that the fabric stays in place and that the seams are lined up perfectly. You'll want to sew along the edge at half an inch or 1.27 centimeters. And we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process as before. I just wanted to show you quick. I was halfway through and realized that pinning the fabric together at the seams, it's much easier to um, pin it vertically rather than horizontally. Um, this way it can ensure that the seams do not come apart and um, you can easily line it up much, much better. So I would recommend pinning the fabric at the seams vertically. Isn't this so beautiful? We're almost done. We're at the halfway point. All we have to do now is just fray the raw edges and I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. But first what we'll need to do is since some of the seams are still sewn down, when we were assembling and attaching the strips, all we have to do is individually go to each row and column and just cut along the seam. That way it's flowing and the flap is not um, secured down. This part is very time consuming, but just put in a movie or listen to a podcast. This will be over before you know it. So what I'm doing now is with my safety pin, I'm going to secure the top part of the square. That way I know which side is up. I'm going to go ahead and throw this into the washer and dryer and put it in another cycle. And this is going to loosen up the thread so that we can fray the seams. As you can see, I just pulled this out of the washer and dryer and there were loose threads everywhere, but that's okay. That's part of the process. That's what we want. Next up, you'll want to use a toothbrush or a soft bristle brush to brush your sewing project and you'll want to do so in one direction or the other and this is going to soften up the texture of the fabric and it's going to continue to pull out the loose threads to expose the seams a little bit more to give you more of a raw seam and or more like a pom-pom look and also the more you wash the fabric and brush the fabric the softer it gets and the puffier the raw exposed seams will look so once you get to a point where the threads no longer are being pulled out while you're brushing, you'll want to grab the scissors and start trimming your exposed seams. You can um, make them shorter or you can leave them as long as you like. Um, just keep in mind that whatever sewing project that you're working on, 
um, you may have to do the same process just a couple of times, but you will get to a point um, where you can wash and launder your sewing project and you won't have to repeat this process. But in the end, it's so rewarding. It took so long to do this, but I'm so excited to finally be able to sew my sewing project. Once you're satisfied with the results, take it outside for a good shake and then you're done. So what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. This looks like a cute boho rug, but it's not. You'll have to tune in next week. Okay, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to join me next week to see what I'm going to make out of this. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I would love it if you give me a like. Um, I do plan on working on more sewing projects using the painter's drop cloth. If that's your jam, then go ahead and subscribe. That way you don't miss out. So don't forget, tune in next week. It's going to be so good. We'll see you then. Bye.